Tower of God has some of the best art I've ever seen. However, it isn't like that from the start. And I know quite a few people who want to give Tower of God a chance, either because they've seen the anime or they've just heard about it or whatever. But once they start reading season one, they're quickly, they quickly just think it's the worst thing ever. And they're like, what is this abomination of art? And they stop reading. This is obviously really sad because as we all know, the story of Tower of God and the world is so much more than just what the art looks like right away. And even the art itself, even though it looks kind of wonky, you get really used to it and it quickly improves. I mean, like by the time you get to episodes 20, 30, chapters 20 and 30, it gets much, much better. But even then, like I always say, even though the art kind of sucks at first, the world transcends that, you know what I mean? But regardless, the art gets incredible, especially with some of our favorite characters, they start to look like new characters. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at the art, see what the characters looked like in season one, and then sort of see their progression up until the middle of season two. The reason I'm choosing the middle of season two as a stopping point is because I feel like that's kind of where Tower of God maxes out in terms of art. I feel like Hell Train Saga, especially the middle of the Hell Train Saga, is when the art just gets so phenomenal. And while I really like the season three art as well, I mean, it's, it's better in a lot of ways, I feel like that's my favorite style was sort of like Hell Train Floor of Death time. If you like this kind of content, then make sure to subscribe because we upload every single day here on the channel. Plenty of Tower of God content. I'm always listening to you guys, see what kind of videos you want to see me make. So like the video, comment below, all that stuff. Let's get into it. So let's start with Bomb here. So Bomb obviously appears in episode one or chapter one of the webcomic and he looks bland, right? He looks very boring. And I remember when I was first reading Tower of God, this Bomb's design did not impress me because I just thought he looked he looked like a kid and I, I his face was just kind of blobby and I, I didn't love it. So I feel like that's sort of one reason why people don't want to read it because he, he also just looks very childlike. And I don't know, that's really the best way as I can describe it. But once we get into volume two, obviously we got Viole and the art just quickly improves. Bomb starts to look much much more, not just badass, but like the art itself, it gives him a, a refined look and his design is finally concrete and secure. And then by the time we get to Floor of Death, oh my gosh, Bomb looks incredible. The art is so good. And I love the fact that SIU constantly gives Bomb a new outfit as well. Uh, we all know that Bomb doesn't always choose the best looking outfits, but the art itself is incredible. I really like how his like yellow eyes look so much better. So when comparing it to volume one, we start to see his transformation to Juvia Grace, and then we get to Floor of Death. Bomb's improvement was massive. I would say it's definitely one of the bigger changes is with Bomb. Then we've got Kuhn, and Kuhn never looked bad by any means, but when you first meet him, his hair, there's something about it. I can't really explain it, but there's something about his hair that's just a little off at first. And, and his face, like, I feel like everybody's facial features are kind of blobby and morphed in season one. Again, it's not bad, but just comparatively, right? Um, once we get into volume two, at first, you know, seeing Kuhn with that, uh, the, um, the Girl Scout outfit, you know? It's like, whatever, that's fine. But once we, again, once we get into Workshop Battle and on, onto the Hell Train, Hell Train Kuhn looks sick. And then we get into Floor of Death, like again, he, he starts to go from looking kind of childlike, like he did in season one, blobby face, his hair is kind of all over the place, to Kuhn, you look incredible. So once again, I mean, I, I think there's not as much of a change for Kuhn, actually. I, I, I really do feel like Bomb just looked, too boring, you know, at first. Kuhn at least had a really cool design, but I, but there was still a very big change from season one to season two, and middle of season two, and looking at it, like, especially when you compare them. Like, comparing season one Kuhn to season two Kuhn, it's like comparing two different characters. For Bomb, I can at least see how he transformed, but Kuhn, he looks a million times better. Now, Rack is interesting because I actually think, although of course the art improves for Rack as, as it does for everybody else, Rack honestly looks the same. He looks pretty much exactly the same. We get more of Chibi Rack in seasons two and three, but as far as the actual art style goes in his design, Rack looks amazing. And I really love how whenever he transforms, SIU just flexes with his art. Now, keeping that in mind, Rack looked good from the get-go. He looked like a big crocodile, which is exactly what he is. He had a lot of detail done to him, and it's the same now. 
So honestly, I think Rack stay, has honestly stayed the same. There was never anything weird looking about Rack. So Rack, good for you, man. Now, Endorsey is an interesting one. I actually think if, if, if Bomb is the worst one so far, and even then, it's not bad. Not, none of this is bad, but just comparatively, we're seeing this evolution of their characters. You might not realize this unless you look at the pictures, but when you first meet in Dorsey, she looks, again, very childlike. Not not a child like Bomb, but much younger, and her face is kind of, again, the face shape, the blobbiness. She does not look like a woman. <laughs> she looks like a girl. Now, not as much as Bomb, but still, there is a difference. Now, as we get into season one, she starts to change a little bit. So hide and seek in Dorsey, as you go on and on, when she starts fighting Quant, she starts to look a little bit more mature. Um, but volume two, bro, season two transforms in Dorsey. I remember showing my girl, my girlfriend somehow saw pictures and she was like, that's not Dorsey, is it? I'm like, yeah, that's a Dor Like, there's not many characters where you could say that. She looks very different. She's much taller comparatively to the other characters. She, I don't know, like she just changed a lot. And it's very interesting to see that. And once we get into Hidden Floor and all that, Name Hunt Station, she, she, she's pretty much stayed the same throughout season two, but continuing that improvement of the art in Dorsey looks solid, especially comparing it to that season one design. If we take a look at Anok, Anok looked good from the get-go, I would say. You know, we do have the, the wonky face design. I, I don't even know, I keep calling it wonky or blobby face. I don't know what else to say. Uh, just that typical, the, the, the early season one style, but it looked better on a knock, in my opinion, than it did on people like Cooner Bomb or Dorsey. So a knock honestly looked great throughout season one, but then volume two just adds detail to a knock. It adds detail to all the characters, shading and all the, the lines look sharper, but particularly with a knock, it works so well. She looks less like a, like a lizard girl to like, a lizard, like it, like it, I don't, it's hard to explain. I'm not an artist, so I'm sorry. This video is kind of all over the place, but a knock looks a million times better, especially considering she looked fine in season one. So a knock's change and a knock's evolution was honestly amazing. Really, really love the evolution of a knock. Hots is an interesting case because he looked fine at the beginning, but his ears were like huge, like weirdly big. And I'm not really sure why, I never noticed it until I started like comparing them. His ears were huge. And then we get to hide and seek and, and on and on in volume one. And he looks fine. Like everybody's designs got better in season one, but season two makes my man Hots a man. It makes Hots a man. Hots becomes really freaking good looking. All right, and I, look, I'm just saying, all right, Hots looks incredible in season two. Workshop battle, he's got that jacket, which is awesome. And then we get into the Hell Train and the Name Hunt Station, and I'm like blown away. Hots' design is so cool, because Hots as a character, but he never had any flashy coloring clothes or, or, or his hair wasn't going, he was just a normal looking swordsman guy, right? And yet, he looks so cool in season two that it works so well. So the evolution of Hots was excellent. I'm not really sure why he looked, like looking at season one Hots, it is, he does look very different. It's like, wow Hots, look looking like Dumbo over here. Probably the worst offender of the evolution throughout Tower of God, the one who probably has undergone the most change is Le Ro Ro. Now, if you're an anime watcher or you're somebody who forgot what Leroy looked like back then, he looked like something out of a Tim Burton movie. He, he looked like freaking some Willy Wonka-esque creature. He had these like wide legs, walk around like that. He looked strange. Leroy has always had big ears, so like that's fine. You know, it's part of his character. But like comparing that with his goofy legs and his goofy smile, he looked kind of terrifying. Now the anime obviously scrapped that early design, but he really did look like a completely different character. But then we get to season two, Leroro. Well, even even late season, late season one, Leroro, he quickly goes back to Leroro we know and love. But then we get to season two, Leroro. My man is good looking. Leroro? He gets clean. He looks so good during the workshop battle. 
that it's kind of awesome. And I'm very excited to see, because I know he's going to come back in season three at some point. I'm excited to see where that evolution continues to go, because we haven't seen him in a while. But it's a huge change when you compare it to point A and point B. He goes from some kind of grotesque creature to one of the best looking men in Tower of God. Good on you, Leiro Ro. You deserve that. What does that even mean? He deserves... I don't know. Leiro Ro deserves everything. Okay, just move on. And lastly, I know we could talk about a ton of other characters, maybe in another video, but we're going to look at Rachel. Because early Rachel, comparing it to current Rachel, you can tell it's the same character, but she has the same sort of design flaw, not a flaw, but sort of the same sort of thing going on as Bomb did. Blobby face, her design is just kind of bland. Now here's the thing, it kind of works for Rachel, because that's sort of how she's supposed to be, plain and bland, but I like the current Rachel because she still has that sort of thing going on, and yet at least her, the art is, is, is focused and, and clear. So early Rachel, kind of the same thing. I don't have many comments to say about this. She looked fine, you know, but I do really like the current Rachel art style just because it fits in so well. Everybody just looks so clean. And when you compare it, she didn't undergo that much of a change, but she does look a lot better. So there you go. Those are some of my thoughts on some of the changes made to the characters in Tower of God. Some of you probably forgot how different a lot of these characters looked. I apologize if I was all over the place. Again, I'm not an artist, but I do like comparing the designs and just seeing how these characters have changed and grown. And obviously some of the characters just look different, but I was more examining the art as a whole and as opposed to just getting different hairstyles like Bomb. So regardless, thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like on this video and let me know what other kinds of videos you'd like to see relating to Tower of God. This was a lot of fun, kind of spur of the moment thing. But we also have a Discord server where you can talk about Tower of God. So if that interests you, link is in the description down below. Thanks once again. I'll see you guys in my next Tower of God video. Take care.